Welcome to the Talk and Smash podcast. I'm your host, Matt Hetherington, joined today by Craig Bryant, uh, former England international cadet junior and senior, uh, won a silver medal at the Commonwealth Championships with the England team and has become quite a renowned coach um, in the UK and now around the world. Um, anyone who follows table tennis online will be pretty familiar with uh, Tom Lodziak's video four killer serves to destroy your opponents that's a one of craig's many videos and now of course you have uh set yourself up on instagram um to do some some a lot of serve education and some fun serve videos and that is at the tt service guy which i will throw on screen so that people can follow you um craig thanks for joining me yeah no problem at all uh yeah well known in the uk definitely I'm sure a few people know me worldwide, but um, that's the objective, hopefully, in the next couple of years. So it's a, it's a work in progress. I'm yeah. telling you, it's going to happen. I've, <laughs> I've, I've, seen, I've seen the content. I've reviewed it. I know the direction that it's going in. I'm, I'm pretty confident okay. by well, the end of the year, we'll be, we'll be bumping at least five figures. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed it'll happen. Well, you're the perfect person for, uh, for me to have on the podcast for this topic because the topic is serve. Um, obviously for this podcast, I really want to delve into areas that are a little bit less talked about. And, um, one of the things for me as a coach is, um, is how kind of underrated service practices and, and how overlooked it is. Um, and you're, you're a player who has, uh, a very high level of serve, um, particularly compared to the rest of your game. I remember, um, Pitch and Paul, um, when they did their podcast during the, the lockdown, they had a, a discussion about who had a really high level of serve or who had a service level that was, you know, significantly higher compared to other areas of their game. Um, and both Pitchford and Paul Drinkle both mentioned your name. So some international recognition there from the boys at home. That's, um, that's nice of them to say, because I cannot tell you the last time that I troubled either of them with my serves. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they are they are the next level, but that's nice of them to say. So we, we'll start with the really obvious question, um, and, and one that you've probably answered a number of times: um, service and table tennis. How important is it? How much of an advantage can you get from having a good serve? Even as a player, you know, perhaps uh, like a mediocre recreational player, what doors do you feel that service can open up at any level of the game? I think the the more you come down to the intermediate beginner level, I think serves have a bigger impact. Um, I think in the higher level, there can be it can be more significant. One or two points added to your game is very significant when you're, you know, when all those top levels are so close to one another. That that little that little extra spin or a little bit of deception can can make a significant difference. Um, but with the majority of us. You know, playing at that intermediate, the national and regional competition level, um, it can turn three nil losses into three nil wins. You know, if you're losing eleven mm. nine, eleven nine, eleven nine, you know, dedicating some time to your serve can add two or three points to your game potentially, um, and that is yeah, transformative. Um, it can take your game to to new levels for sure. Yeah, I actually remember in in the US they had a uh, a charity kind of charity exhibition event, um, and it was in Vegas, and it was Chris Paul, the NBA player, and he would invite all of these NBA players, you know, that have like Steph Curry and a bunch of other well known uh, well known NBA players to to raise money for things, and um, he would basically invite them to this ping pong tournament, and you know, some of them could hit a ball none of them really had any significant skills, yeah. but Chris Paul could serve. He had this kind of, somebody had taught him how to do like a, a backhand side spin serve. And he was the only one who could serve even remotely well. And he was just inviting these guys to this tournament so that he could crush them. Like they had no chance at all. Just same, same serve, backhand serve, side spin. They touch the ball, it goes flying out. Chris Paul is just wiping the floor at them. And I always tell people, um, especially beginners when they're like, well, now I'm starting to play matches. What, what, what can make a big difference for me? I'm like, get, get yourself a good serve, get a tricky serve. People have very, people struggle a lot with receive. So 
yeah, it can definitely, definitely open up a lot of windows, even at the, you know, even when you're just picking up the spot. That's that's a great example. All, if all he's got is a serve, he beats all of his mates. You know that showed yeah. how significant <laughs> it can be. You know, one one thing. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a good example. Um, so here's an interesting question for you because my answer is probably going to differ a lot. Um, what when you were growing up, when you were training a lot, um, take me through like the, I guess the the roadmap of your career of, of how much you were service practicing or, or how important it was because yeah. you assume you usually you assume that somebody who has a good serve has practiced it a lot. Yeah. So I kind of, I think I probably got to about 13 or 14 and I had lots of different serves and they were all okay. Um, and it was yeah. Alan Cook that said to me, you know, you've got all these serves which one do you think is your best serve? And I said, I think it's, you know, the hook or jab serve, um, whatever you want to call it. I think, I think that's my strongest serve. Yeah. And he quite simply said, just go away and master that serve. Just go and figure out. So he didn't give me any technical knowledge or, uh, you know, in-depth insight into how to create lots of different things. But he did help give me uh, some focus in an area. So it was about age 14 then when I really started to ramp up um, not only my service practice, the time on the table, but what I was going to do with it and how much spin I could create and how many illusions I could create. And it was at that age that I became fascinated with serving because my focus was directed quite specifically. Um, and then, yeah, then after I would say three, four, five, six months maybe of, of playing around with things, you build up a bit of confidence to use this stuff in match play. You start to cause people problems. You start to beat people that you hadn't beaten before. I distinctly mm. remember, I don't know if you know a guy called Greg Baker, um, who was uh, head coach of the British Para Table Tennis. He, he left not too long ago. I lost him 15 times in a row as, you know, between the ages of, 10 and 14 or something um and at 16 i beat him and never lost to him again after that now i'm sure there were other factors as well but that was around the time that my serve started to develop too um so yeah i started picking up wins that i hadn't before and my forehand hadn't particularly got any better my backhand hadn't particularly got any better but my serves had so for me that was that was the the determining factor um, to my progression at that age. Uh, yeah, so that, that that made a huge difference, just having a focus. Do you, do you feel like, I mean, your serve, I've seen some of your matches from the Belgian League and I've seen you playing like, you know, players like Save and like Raiko Gomez and stuff. Your serve is still able to give them a lot of trouble. Like, and, and they, these are like, these are great players and, I've yeah, I've seen some of your matches, and the serve has just made a huge difference for you. It's great to watch. It's, it's very satisfying and, and gratifying when players of that level are, are having problems. Um, and for me, they have problems. I think one because they've not seen anything like that before, or probably not seen it too much. Um, mm. And for me, the, the I suppose going through that adulthood phase of nine yeah so 18 19 20 um i really paid a lot of attention to the detail of how the serve looked and and uh, the flight of the ball and how to really make it look like something else um and i think by that stage i'd perfected those skills when i was playing in belgium so i think i really was able to show them you know they were they thought they were seeing something else and that's when they were mm. making mistakes but yeah, that's just great confirmation that that I'd nailed something when you're when you're falling. I mean, save I think was the longest standing number one in the world, sixteen weeks, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was. But it seems like fifteen months, I think. So yeah, you know, to to be able to do something like that to someone with such a legacy is 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 quite remarkable. So yeah, yeah. pleasing. <laughs> And, and that lives forever on YouTube now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and so were you, were you like very strict with your, 
with your service practice and in, in terms of how often you did it and and how kind of how it was structured um or was that did that change also during your i mean obviously like a lot of younger kids they they start to take more interest in so more interest in serve practice sometimes yeah not always but you kind of have a like an evolution of how you approach serve practice um yeah um for me i enjoyed doing it it was fun for me to do and i think whatever you enjoy is quite easy to practice so if i was ready to train and others weren't i would I would be there practicing my serve. If we'd finished, I'd mm. practice my serve. In the break, I would practice my serve. No one would have to tell me to. I would just be there thinking about how I can create a little bit of backspin and, and then try and really replicate this topspin action. And then I'd watch it back on the camera and then know that didn't look quite right. So I was just engrossed in it. Um, so I think the key difference was that I enjoyed doing it. Um, and therefore, it was easy for me to do. I think many people don't enjoy it, and I think that's one partly yeah, because the vast majority. <laughs> yeah, one one, and I think because people aren't confident in teaching it or delivering it, I think that's passed across, and then players don't get the, any enthusiasm from yeah. it. Often, it's right. We're going to do service practice for twenty minutes. Right, off you go. And coach has his back on the wall mm -hmm. and, and his phone out or whatever, and it's yeah. you're not getting that attention. So, I suppose I'm not saying that everyone needs to enjoy it, but there are things that you can do to create a focus and to create enjoyment and attention and being able to change the task from time to time to keep your focus. And I think they're probably the, the things that are that are missed. Um, yeah, um, that actually leads kind of perfectly into, into the next question is um, obviously now that you've kind of moved on from playing and you've been coaching more generally how do you feel about um, from what you've seen and from what you've experienced how do you feel about how other coaches um, approach service practice I mean my my experience here in the, in the U.S. is they're very vocal about it. Um, you know, they might finish a, a private lesson, a one-to-one -one lesson, and then at the end of it, like, go, go and practice your serve. You have to practice your serve. But then they're off teaching the next lesson. And you have a kid that goes off to a bucket of balls and just races through as fast as they can, or nobody really knows what's going on, uh, let alone the kid. Yeah. Um, so in, in your experience, do you feel that um, do you feel that like the education part of people not actually learning how to manage their own service practices is quite a big factor in it as well? Yeah, I think I think it's a, a missed opportunity from coaches. Um, I think we always, you know, myself included in that, you want to feel like you're doing stuff and, and, and having an impact. And often that results in having someone out of breath on the other side of the table because you've given them a beasting with multi-ball and you feel like <laughs> right i've i've done my job and look they're, fulfilled yeah. yeah they're struggling so they've done their job pat on the back and we're we're both brilliant and satisfied whereas working with someone for 20 minutes on their serve is slow and it's technical and it's it, it, and it's it's a mental challenge yeah not physically demanding and I think and it can take a long time to to see some form of success as well so it's it's tough from a coaching perspective when you're not seeing progress in a few minutes and maybe the parents sat on the side and they're thinking what's what's going on here so it's it's, it's a hard one to manage but it's an absolute missed opportunity that we don't engage enough in that and I think that's partly for the reasons that I've said and maybe partly maybe a lack of confidence or understanding in, in wanting to deliver that. Um, I mean, I, there was a phase for me where I went from playing to coaching and people want to know how I do my serves, but I'd never taught my serves before. I knew how to serve, yeah. but I never knew how to teach my serves. I could show people what I do. So there was also a phase as a young coach where I'm trying to, you know, break down my own serves and 
think about what are crucial teaching points and what people pick up easy and what they find difficult. And so I suppose that's what I've been doing for the past nine or 10 years is, is understanding way, you know, teaching methods to, to let everyone know. So a good, good example of that is that top, top players or competent players, they can't always articulate what they do. They're just, they're very good at doing. Um, Mm. So yeah, that, that teaching and passing of information is, is a separate skill on its own. Yeah, I think the the tragedy of it is that you have players that are being sent to do surf practice, maybe at the end of each session, and all of that time being kind of not misguided but unguided. Just it, it doesn't really get them anywhere. You have all of this repetition. Um, you know, maybe they're doing service practice uh, three times a week, but without any scope or focus, is it really helping this serve that much? And for the majority of the players, it, it doesn't elevate really anything. Um, and you end up with, you know, young players who are putting in the time to do the service practice and not really seeing much improvement in their serve or their service game at all. So so it's, it's kind of unfortunate as well. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's described as naive practice. Yeah. Where you're just repetition for repetition's sake. Um, and not only is it not progressive, it, it's sometimes detrimental as well. They'll go backwards. Um, I suppose to liken it to something, imagine we were practicing our forehand topspin three times a week for 20 minutes. You know, we've all we, we've practiced our forehand topspin for years and years, multiple times. We're, we're not going to get any better. Yeah, mine's, mine's still terrible. <laughs> Come on now, we've seen the videos. The fade is down. Um, so yeah, you know, you, it's okay when it goes on. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we've got editing for, Matt. Um, yeah, so you, you practice your forehand three times a week for twenty minutes. It's not going to get any better just practicing your forehand, and it, it's the same with the serve. The frustrating part is it's very, it's quite simple to correct. If you if you do, if you genuinely don't have time to spend with someone, and you want to set them uh, set them something, and you need to to head off to another session. It's very easy to set them some sort of challenge. You know, can you, if you want them to practice their long, fast serve down the line, for example, you know, you can use some form of target to hit, that's fine. But you can say, you know, you have to serve five short serves with two bounces before you get an attempt at the long, fast one. And then there's an agenda straight away, then they've got to work on consistency of their short serve and to be able to control it enough that they get two bounces every time, not three, not one. Um, and then there's a bit yeah. of pressure on them to execute their long fast serve in an ideal yeah. world. I think that, 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 yeah, that kind of leads on into the next part that I wanted to talk about, which is the, the, the quality of the service training is, is kind of, there's a lack of it being purpose driven. So, you know, you don't have scope that you have players that go, oh, okay, I'm going to go and practice my serve, which serve which variations of that serve, what am I aiming for? Do I have any, uh, anything to evaluate against or anything to, you know, there's no feedback, um, because you don't know whether you're succeeding or failing. You don't know what you're measuring. And also I think, um, aside from that, I guess people fail to understand that servers also no less mechanical than learning a forehand loop. Like they, they, they don't pay attention necessarily to all these, these little details that they could change. But when you give them goals, like when you, let's say, you know, you put a towel on the table with, you know, a certain amount of uh, space at the end and say all of your long fast serves have got to get over this towel. And to do that, you know, you need to drive more, more through your waist. You need to make sure where this first bounce is going, all of these little details. Um, I, I very rarely see that um that kind of guidance for younger players so i think yeah the purpose driven aspect that you were talking about and also you know putting obstacles in and targets and stuff like that for me like when i made my service videos during the lockdown um my thing has always been service practice unless 
you're an anomaly like <laughs> like yourself um it's not something that people enjoy but the main reason is it, it's your brain turns off you know if you're just repeating serve after serve after serve there's nothing to engage you there's nothing there's no challenge there's no you don't feel that necessity to to change things or improve things um it's one of the things like I always love doing, obviously, for people who've seen my Instagram is um, different serve challenges. You know, can I make the ball deviate more? Can I make the bounce sharper? Um, you know, can I curve the ball around and make it kick backwards or do these kind of more like go serve demonstrations and stuff like that? Um, so f for me, I was always looking for different ways to improve my contact as much as I could. That was kind of my, my shtick. And if I could do that with the other parts of my game, maybe, maybe I would have gotten further. Well, um, I think I've been, yeah, I've always there. felt, <laughs> I, I've always felt that purpose driven practice has been the kind of the missing gap for, uh, for service. Yeah. And uh, it's it, like you said, it's, it's one having a purpose, but two, having a having a coach help you find that purpose you know have they just seen you know, i don't know what alan saw with my serve but maybe just saw a bit more competency with that technique and that's fine that gives me something to work towards maybe it's feedback from a match where actually they're getting in off of this serve so we need to work on this one and, and make it tighter or spinnier or whatever it may be mm. but like you said there's there's a reason for for working on that and and in having that focus, the goal becomes very clear and you need to maintain that goal. It's very easy to get distracted by all the all the variety that there is with serving. You know, so if you're wanting to produce more spin on your serve and you're focusing on the contact and where it's landing and how quick your wrist is accelerating through, that that's the main objective to start with. Often what happens is when we're practicing that, we'll serve in the net and we'll make a mistake or it bounces off the end or whatever it may be. And then we're concerned with getting the ball on, which of course, mm. that is, you know, that's where we want to be at the end. But when you try and get the ball on, you end up losing the quality in the serve. So, you know, working in steps, and this is where a coach can obviously help massively with, with, those, with those various steps that you need to take. But... You know, can we improve the contact first, whether the ball is on or not? Yes. Okay, right now, how do we get the ball on and keep that same quality? Right, no, the ball's on, but we've lost the quality. Right, let's go back to the quality. Right. But that, that yeah. changing of task and focus is what keeps you focused rather than serving a thousand short serves. Right. Yeah. I have a little, uh, I've got a little curveball to throw at you here, um, just for fun, um, just to break things up a little. I'm ready. Um, so I, I, I've, I've, in these podcasts, decided to throw in little small features, and I've decided to call this one box office hit. Um, <laughs> so he's wondering what the hell am I talking about? So um, basically, uh, the concept is, and you can have as much fun with this as you like, if there was going to be a blockbuster movie about the table tennis career of Craig Bryant, what would it be called? Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting personal now. <laughs> Many stories. Hey, God, that's up to you. It could be. <laughs> oh, where would this go? Um, oh, it would have to be, it would have to be the kicker serve, wouldn't it? The title of it would have to be the kicker serve. Um, I would love to have, and I could probably do a fairly comprehensive um, uh, list or clips of videos of this, but just a load of videos of people that have, have pushed the kicker over the years. <laughs> that would be... A, that would be your entire movie. <laughs> that, that would be my entire movie. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a tough question. It's, it's got I had a couple of good ones. I actually thought about this myself and I thought... First one I came up was, are we there yet? <laughs> if, in what, in what if I could describe, if, if I was thinking about my whole table tennis career. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> are, are we there yet? 
or maybe it's a, it's still a long way to the top. Yeah, I think those are kind of the two. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, you've just ignited a bit of thought there for me, but you know, in in understanding all the work and effort that I put into my serves over the years, just showed me how much I neglected the other areas, and I just focused on the things that that I enjoyed. Um, and you know, seeing players when I was nineteen, twenty years old that I beaten um you know mm-hmm. excel to the top you know there's players that i've beaten that are in the top 30 of the world um and, and that that at the time was hard to take um probably because i knew that i didn't put the same amount of work in um in 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 all of the areas so yeah that would that would be that would certainly be the the, the sad moment of the blockbuster of where uh, yeah i didn't didn't quite <laughs> throw everything at at the opportunities that i had but um, yeah, that is what it is. We are where we are. Kick a surf. And uh, I, I like that. Well, maybe maybe one day. Keep your eyes peeled on the box office. Well, <laughs> there <laughs> might be a new a box surf. office in three years when I hit forty years old uh, on the veteran circuit. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll keep our eyes out. Um, actually, the, it was quite funny how you mentioned. Um, about you know having that little bit of regret that you might not have worked on other parts of your game as much um funny story um when i moved to the us before i moved to the us um my serve was actually quite bad um i didn't really i was never never ever um kind of looked at as a a player who had even remotely a good serve at all um and I moved to the US and once I moved to the US, I discovered very quickly that everything in the US is all you can eat. Everywhere you go, you go to sushi, you go to Chinese buffet, everything's all you can eat. And I think within like the first year that I'd been here, I'd put on so much weight and I was like, oh, I'm playing table tennis. I'm getting so slow and just having trouble beating anyone. And I, I can't move to my forehand anymore. And so the biggest challenge for me became how can I get people to return the ball to my backhand all the time? (laughs) Or how can I get the ball to go exactly where I want it? And that for me was kind of, I don't really, I don't really understand what happened. It it was almost not that deliberate. Um, I did some service practice, but not huge amount. Um, But I was very conscious of like, when I was practicing service, really trying to get the most out of it that I could. And, um, before I knew it, I had people coming into the club and, and Lily Yep, who was the coach of the club. She was like, Oh, you got to take a lesson for the serve return with Matt. It's the best server. And I was like, nobody has ever said that I was a good server. Like when I moved to this country, my serve was worse than the rest of my entire game. Um, problem being as my serve got better, uh, I then got lazier because I, I could afford to be, you know, if I served well and I played against someone, they hit the ball exactly where I wanted, then I have to move. Not a big deal. Um, so I, I kind of had that same dilemma. My service level went up and, and my footwork just went to shit in, in just such a, such a quick manner. Um, and yeah, uh, there's definitely a f- won't see me stepping around on the forehand as much these days. <laughs> there's there's a few interesting things in that. That's really good. Um, it just shows you how useful it is, one, to have a purpose, which we've spoken about already, and you, you had a purpose that you want more balls for your backhand. Um, the, also, the other pivotal thing is that you didn't really know how or why that happened. And often mm. players don't need to understand. They might want to understand, but they don't need to understand. In fact, the more they unpick it, the more it goes, you know, start overthinking things and then it's tough to to retain those skills. So two great examples that you were trying to achieve something and you weren't quite sure how you got there. Um, But yeah, and then it shows you how important it is that when you focus on one area, it's all about balance as well. You know, we have to work on our Mm -hmm. forehand, our consistency, our footwork. It's obviously, you know, it's a very dynamic game that we play and there's lots of aspects to it. But yeah, I yeah. As well as being renowned for a, you know a decent server, I was also renowned for being a lazy player, as well with with poor footwork. So yeah, I've got a couple of accolades. 
But yeah, I had I had a guy in Belgium say to me after the match, he um, walked around the hall, came came right up to me and said, "To me, you are slow, but you are everywhere." <laughs> You're slow, but you're everywhere. That's slow, right. but you're everywhere. I was like, I think that's a compliment. Thank you. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Is it? <laughs> that's great. Okay, we'll move to a. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a more heated area of discussion, but um, I guess uh, one of the things that I like to talk about a little bit is um, what are some of the things that you see in service practice that frustrate you immensely i mean you know when when you see other 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 kids or other students or other people out there with a box of balls and you see them practicing your serves what are those kind of small handful of things that you see where you just stand there and just shake your head and think oh like you just wish you could run over and be just shake them and and tell them yeah i, I think lots of description Lots of instruction, uh, often too much instruction. It's so complex service. It's, you know, if you think just about doing a pendulum serve, there's there's so many parts of your arm that are moving and a timing point and where it lands on the table and players can't, well, people can't comprehend that much information. Um, you know, you often just give them one or two things to think about. So often that that uh, yeah overwhelming them with 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 content is quite frustrating because you know it doesn't really lead anywhere that's that's right up there for me that's that's infuriating um the other thing is them trying to impose how they do things on people i think serving is very individual and i think it's i think a, i think a good coach will be able to take a step back and look at a player and go that that's working well and this looks why this looks like why it's not quite working so that's the bit that i need to to help them with um i don't use a lot of body or rotation in in my serves a lot of it is with my hand and my wrist and i can create what i need to um but often i get that as a question and it's if if you feel that that helps you give you more control and and you're getting the effect that you need to then then fine. But I suppose where I impose my thoughts there is that if you're turning for one serve and then not turning for a slower one or something, then, then you're, you're giving things away. So whatever technique you, you adopt, you need to be consistent with it. But yeah, so it's, it's incredibly individual and you need to find your way and a coach should be there to help you unlock those different ways that you're, you're able to execute your serve. Hmm. I think one of the things that I, if I, if I'm just looking at players, one of the things that I see a lot that actually it's probably at the top of the list for me. And I have made an Instagram video about it before is, is, is players just thundering through a box of balls and you know, it's like out of the pocket, one serve, two serve, three serve, four serve, five serve. And they, they, they just, they pay no attention to what's happening to the ball on the other side of the table. And it's just a, a rat race to get through to the end of this box to say, go, cool, I finished my service practice. I'm going home to play video games now. <laughs> um, that for me, like when I'm watching people do service practice, drives me nuts. Uh, and, and it's never, you know, I don't, I don't actually coach anymore. So I, you know, when I go to the club, I'm just there to play for myself. Okay. Um, so these are other people's students. So I don't say anything. I have to internalize all this mm. until now because I have a podcast and I can say what I want. Um, but but seeing people, it just that for me is the biggest waste of time to, to not have any time to digest what's happening. And it just like, you may as well be feeding multiball. Like what does a multiball feeder learn from feeding multiball? Not that much. It's the person on the other end of the table yeah. that's, that's yeah. doing the work. It's, um, I think if you compare, me nuts. they could do they could do five serves with a coach just saying, "Can you do this?" Just five serves only. Yeah, and they would get more from that than they would from the entire box of just mindless right. serves. Two hundred balls in yeah. rapid succession. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So that's a big one for me, and 
um, probably my biggest pet peeve. Um, we'll move on to the last point. Um, maybe I thought this would be a good opportunity for you to, to pick a serve and kind of uh, give an example of, of like in your thought process, what a, uh, what a good service practice might look like. Um, like if you were to choose a, a particular serve and a particular variation, maybe some kind of challenge or um, something to evaluate during it. Um, is there anything that pops out to you that, that you would use frequently? Um, we might have to come back to this maybe, but the thing that, that's just popped into my mind is, which is linked to this, but is practicing it against someone. So, you know, we do all of this practice against Right. You know, yeah. Cones and positions and can we get the ball to spin back and things. But like you said, feedback is so important. So there's absolutely a time and a space for serving on your own. But there's also a test day when you've got a well, I've been working on all this deception. Um mm. you know, I absolutely need to test it out on someone and if they start hitting your serve past you, then you know, there's a bit more. That's feedback. To, to be <laughs> That's different. definitely feedback. Um, equally, if they end up flicking your backspin ball in the net, then that's that's also great feedback. So, yeah, great to do all these tasks and challenges and watch the videos and try and replicate different things. But yeah, there's a there's a time to to really um, yeah to te test them out and, and and be brave and it's going to cost you points in league matches and things. Mm. But that's uh, that's an absolutely vital stage that everyone has to go through. Um, yeah. Um, so a, a routine that, that I would go through. What was the, or well, something maybe is, you know, something that you would have your students do. Let, let's say, um, I know one of the ones that I used to do, um, for example, was, um, I would, I would put a towel on the table on the, on the edge. I would leave a very small, whoops, <laughs> I would leave a very small gap on the edge of the table. Yeah. And for me as a left-hander working on pendulum serves that really deviated across was, was important for me. And that serves that I use all the time. Um, and if people figure them out, then it's okay. I don't play that many tournaments anymore, but um, my goal was always to get the first bounce of the serve towards the center of the table and then have the ball kick over the width of the towel yeah. and bounce on the edge and to try and uh, keep repeating that until I could get to a point where I could actually control it so that, you know, 70 to 80% of my serves were getting that consistent kick basically from the center line of the table out to bouncing a second time right on the edge. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's an example of something that I used to, I used to practice as well. Yeah, I think some the, probably the most common thing that I do with players is, and my objective is to give them full control of the ball or for them to, to, to reach that level where they feel they have full control. Um, often people serve with pace and they hit the ball into the table. It's, it's often the bat coming down, the bat's very open and it's very pacey and the ball drifts half long and, um, yeah, mm. and, and people are able to get in. And if you ask them to serve short, they'll often do this, but they'll decelerate, they'll slow down and they'll hit it softer. Yeah. So they get their short serve by hitting it softer. So one thing I do, I think I've got a video on this somewhere. It's all a bit of a blur now. I'll, I'll put um, a basket or a back case or something on their own side and they have to let mm. the ball drop and they have to lift the ball over the basket on their own side. Then it hits, and then, so it completely slows the ball down, and they can start to see these huge effects. And if you do it, next time you do like a cone video or a cone challenge or something where it's the ball spinning on the table, if you think about how you deliver the ball into your own side, you, you'll you be lifting the ball onto your, um, right. onto your side yeah. of the table. So that normally creates a bit of a eureka moment from people and they realise that it's not so much about how much spin can I produce to get these effects, but how you deliver the ball into the table. Um, and it's not that that is the only way that you serve, but it gives you variety within that technique. You can really slow it down and keep it really short or you can hit the back of the ball and get a bit more distance um, on it as well. Mm. So... 
yeah, I'm a big big advocate for for them understanding how to pitch the ball into different you know into different parts and into different you know using different ways um, to deliver it. Fantastic. Does that make sense? This is, see, this is why. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is this is why I had, honestly when when I think about um, when I think about table tennis serves, I, I just I really feel like there are very very few people even online that are that are actually really focused on educating people. Um, you know, there are lots of like nice demonstrations or like you know go serve challenges and stuff like that. But I think um, in terms of people who coach and have a a particular knowledge of coaching serve um it's it's very rare so again you know, you're very very high up my list of, of I, people to have on the podcast it's, it's 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 very easy matt i'm in a space at the minute where i was as a player where i'm still fascinated with serves but i'm fascinated how, how you know what i can still figure out as a coach because they're great for videos and for passing that knowledge on yeah but i'm i'm fascinated with how to get people to you know to to perform skills that they haven't got. That's very gratifying. When someone can't do mm. something and they're frustrated and you're able just to change their focus a little bit um, and using implements to help. You know, I could tell them, can you lift the ball onto your, onto your side? Or I could just stick an obstacle in the way, set some conditions, and they get to figure it out themselves and they're able to retain those skills much more. And yeah. that, that is, that's interesting to me so i'm just in this world where i'm still trying to figure things out and it's and it's uh it's fun so it's easy when it's fun and you let let uh tell tell people what you have going on um what kind of stuff i mean obviously you have the the tt service guy is your new instagram you've been working pretty hard on that content out there and we'll make sure that uh people get out there and follow you but yeah what else is happening with uh with craig so yeah, the, I suppose the purpose of setting that page up um, was to at some point release some form of online coaching. So I've been doing online coaching for two or three years with a handful of people. Uh, it's gone surprisingly well. I thought, again, it was lockdown, I suppose, which induced that. We had to do that with a lot of the players that we were working with. Um, and, yeah. and we saw progress in areas, you know, Games declined in other areas for obvious reasons, but we saw good progress in in a number of areas. So that for me was an op, you know was a, a a bit of a moment where this this could be something. So it's an idea I've been sitting on for a little while, and now I've had an opportunity to do it. So yeah, I've hope, started to build a bit of an audience, and it's at the minute it's growing every day, which is great. Um, I'm getting videos out every day. I'm sure that will slow down at some point and it'll be three times a week or something at, at some point. It's tough. It's tough. But, uh, but I, I don't know. You, the, the good thing about Serve is that you can, uh, there's a lot of stuff you can do. Yeah. And, and for someone like you, like you said, when you're really, really passionate about something and interested in something, especially something so creative, um, there's a lot you can do with it. Yeah. I mean, I've now been posting every day Oh, coming up on like two and a half years, um, which I never, I mean, if you look back at that and think you're looking at like close to a thousand posts, um, it's, it's doable. It's definitely doable. And, and it does, it does pay off in, in a lot of, uh, that's, that's what's posts. interesting. I was kind of lucky. Yeah. You know, if you, if you, if someone asked you that, that question two and a half years ago, right, Matt from today you have to post a video every day. Yeah, exactly. And I, the same for me, you know, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm way behind you in terms of the progress that you've made, but even getting this off the ground, if I, if, if someone told me everything that I needed to do and set up in the background, I probably wouldn't start it. So <laughs> the key thing was that I just, I just started. But just start. Just start. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the 1st of June, is when I'm going to start my online coaching. There's going to be a few different packages Brilliant. available. Um, some for those that just want a little bit of advice. Uh, some for those that want to work a bit more consistently over over the course of a month. Um, I see it working 
in a way where people will send me videos and they outline what they're trying to achieve or a particular serve they're trying to work on. And then they'll get feedback, they'll get a video back, um, and then they'll have some interaction, questions. Depending on the package, they'll yeah. get a plan. Um, yeah, so there's, 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 there's things ready to go, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it's going to work out. The good news is that now I need to hustle to get all my podcasts in line. <laughs> and at least by the time this is actually out, this will all be set up. So people will know exactly where to go. They'll know exactly what to look at. Um, so it'd be perfect. Um, yeah, this has been great. Honestly, I think at some point, um, hopefully you'll, you'll come back on here and we'll, we'll have some other things to talk about. Cause, um, this is for me, the reason why I started the podcast to try and talk to like-minded people and, and really throw some, some light on some, uh, some areas that are, you know, not, not talked about that much. So no. um, this has been fun. This has been really great. And, um, Keep your eye out. Hopefully, we'll be doing some more, uh, some more, uh, the kicker serve collaborations. And uh, we'll see you in the box office. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Thank you for having me on, mate. It was, yeah, really good. Um, I don't always get to chew serves over, I don't get to chat about them a lot. Um, my friends and Stephen Gertson, a business partner of mine, they're incredibly bored of me talking about all of this stuff. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's nice to, nice to chew it over and talk about it all in some detail. Cool. Thanks very much, Craig. Cool. Thank you.